The problem reads, parameterize the paraboloid 2z equals x squared plus y squared and then find its surface area for 1 less than or equal to z less than or equal to 2. Well, first let's think about paraboloid. It sounds like a parabola, parabola that's been revolved. Well, a parabola that's been revolved looks like a bowl. So what I usually just remember is paraboloid is a fancy word for bowl. Now, I stink at freehand drawing, so here is a graphic I made with the free word sage of this paraboloid. And this is the part that we're interested in here, the red part, where z, z is between 1 and 2. So we need to parameterize this paraboloid and then find the surface area that corresponds to this red part here. Parameterizing a surface requires that we have two variables. Parameterizing a curve is one variable. Parameterizing a surface is two variables. And what we look for is key things in our function. And the key thing here is x squared plus y squared, which reminds us of a circle. So let's complete the circle, x squared plus y squared, and we would want something squared here. And so what would we get? The square root of 2z. And so this is what we're going to be using as our radius here. So z is going to be one of our variables, and of course an angle variable for this would be, say, let's say, phi. So we would have x equal to radius, square root of 2z, cosine of phi. And then y would equal the square root of 2z sine of phi. That gives us the paraboloid. And then we'll let z just be z because we have a nice interval for that. Let's check to make sure that this parameterization works. We got two variables, phi and z, no problem. If we do x squared plus y squared, we do get 2z and z equal to z. So we're good and we need to write down our intervals. So phi is, as always with a circle, 0 to 2 pi. And z, we have right over there, is from 1 to 2. So this completes the parameterization of the paraboloid. And actually it even gives us the part of the paraboloid that we want. So. We're looking for the surface area, so we know surface area is just the surface ds. So what we want to know is what formula should we use to find this. So let's go look at our formulas. Here's our formulas for surface areas. We're looking at the ones with, with surface integral ds, so these two here. Uh, this is explicit, this is the parameterized version. So we need this formula here. Here is our formula. This has u and v. We have phi and z. And the first thing we notice is that we don't have a function here. So this is just 1. We do need the gradient vectors here so with the partial derivatives. And we need to find the partial derivatives, uh, take the vector product, and then find the intensity. So let's start by finding the gradient vectors. So delta x we have, delta phi. So z is a constant, so the square root of 2z, and then the derivative of cosine is minus sine of phi, delta y, delta phi. Again, the square root of 2z. Now we just have cosine of phi, and then delta t, delta phi is 0 because there's no phi. Delta x, delta z. So now we're taking the derivative of that square root. So 1 over 2 times the square root of 2z times the derivative of what's inside, 2. And then this is constant, cosine of phi. So the 2's cancel and we have 1 over the square root of 2z cosine of phi. Then we have delta y delta z. We can see it's the same 1 over the square root of 2z. And what do we have? Sine of phi here. And then we have delta z delta z, which we hope is indeed 1. And it is. So there are our partial derivatives. 
and we need to find the vector product of those two partial derivatives and then the intensity of that. So our next step will be to find ds of phi, vector product ds of z. We find that, and then we'll find the intensity of this vector that we get here. And then our surface area will be from 1 to 2 on dz, and from 0 to 2 pi on d phi, whatever we get from here inside of there. So that's our plan. Let's go for it. So here we have set up the vector product with our two gradient vectors here equals, and let's start with i. i, we have the square root of 2z cosine of 5 times 1 minus 0, so just the square root of 2z cosine of i, and then minus j, and we have this minus here times 1, and this is 0, so this is going to be a plus the square root of 2z sine of i, and then plus k, this is a bigger one, so the square roots cancel, we have minus sine squared of phi, minus cosine squared of phi, let's see that, minus cosine squared of phi, right, so, so this last one here is just simply minus 1, everything else stays the same. So now let's move this up and find the intensity of this vector. So we need the square root. And what do we have here? We have 2z cosine squared of phi plus 2z sine squared of phi plus minus 1 squared, so 1, equals the square root, and this is just 2z plus 1. So now we're ready to do our surface integral here, and 2z plus 1 in here. And so we can do phi first, because it, there is no variable, so we would get just the 2 pi in front, from 1 to 2 of 2z plus 1 dz. Now you have to say to yourself, this is 2z plus 1 to the 1 half, so that would be 2z plus 1 to the 3 halves divided by 3 halves, but we also have to divide by the derivative of this, so that's 2. You're welcome to use a proper change of variable. What I said was the derivative of 2z plus 1 is 2, so I divide that out, and then I just have u, let's say, to the 1 half, so the integral is u to the 3 halves over 3 halves. We need to evaluate this from 1 to 2. So these two cancel, so we have 2 pi over 3, and first we substitute 2, so 4 plus 1, so 5 to the 3 halves, minus and then we substitute 1, so 3 to 3 halves. If you're required to give an exact answer, that would be 2 pi over 3 times 5 square root of 5 minus 3 square root of 3. Let's get a calculator and get an answer. So 5 square root times 5 equals, put that in our memory, 3 square root times 3 equals, plus minus, memory plus, memory recall, so this part in here is 5.984, and then times 2 times pi divided by 3 equals 12.53 approximately equal to 12.53. So here is our exact answer, and here is our approximate answer.